Hi, this is John Costin. This video is a rebuttal. I think rebuttal is a strong word. So it's more of a reaction to the um, video that was released uh, not too long ago by uh, a guy named David DiMuzio. Um, David, uh, as you may or may not know, is an artist. Uh, he's a performer who has done uh, some videos, uh, collaborated with some Filipino artists, and he's pretty um, successful. Uh, he released this video to address the Filipino way of life, uh, specifically the way Filipinos um, spend money uh, or how their uh, economic uh, situations are. Um, obviously, it doesn't apply to all Filipinos, but for the majority of Filipinos, um, you know, this is basically the way of life. So I want to address uh, his comments. Uh, again, I'm not uh, here to argue. I'm here to uh, objectively respond to some of his comments because a lot of his comments uh, are also true. Uh, I saw a lot of comments on social, uh, social media um, that tried to address um, and basically argue against what uh, David uh, had said and uh, I'm not here to do that I'm not here to argue I'm just going to be uh, shedding some light on I guess the way Filipinos think uh, I'm Filipino if it's not obvious um, I've been living in the United States for the better part of 30 something years so I've experienced life in the Philippines and I've also experienced life here in the United States and it's very, very different here when compared to back there. I'm not really sure where David DiMuzio's perspective is coming from, uh, but I'm sure it has to do with uh, living in a place outside of the Philippines, meaning, you know, third world versus first world, uh, I'm assuming, uh, since he's a Westerner. Um, but again, I'm not, I'm, I'm I don't really want to assume too much, uh, but based on his comments, um, you know, that's, that's kind of the perception that, that I've, you know, I've gotten. So, you know, let's get into it and, um, and, and see what he has to say. Again, uh, just to be clear, I've also taken the liberty of uh, writing down some notes um, so I can capture, um, you know, the, the information uh, more clearly. So let's get into it. You know, first we're going to get his perspective. I'm going to play the video again, uh, right next to me. So, um, you know, let's see what he has to say. Hi, I'm David DiMuzio. Hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. Time out. Time out, time out, time out, time out. He seems to be better dressed than I am. So, let's even the field out a little bit. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, better? I think so, but I can't grow a beard like that, so let's just let that be. Go on, David. And today, I'm gonna tell you why Filipinos don't get rich. There's a huge issue of financial security among families in the Philippines. And hopefully, in this video, I'm gonna be able to help you so that you and your family do have more financial security, because I think most of the problem is a cultural problem. So before I talk about that, I think it's important to explain where I'm coming from. I grew up really poor. I only wore hand-me-down clothes until I was about 15 years old. Got made fun of my... Okay. He mentions um, that he grew up poor. Um, and that's fine. Um, you know, I, yeah, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't really have to explain himself. So he grew up poor. Um, but I just want to address that particular statement because him growing up poor, I guess in a, I'm assuming he's from the United States, if not Canada, I'm not, I'm not really sure where he's from. Um, but being poor in the United States or Canada is very different from being poor in the Philippines. I think a lot of you would agree with me. Go ahead. Entire school life for wearing 
old sneakers that were out of fashion that other people had given me, clothes that were too big for me. We only ate day old bread at my house when we had bread. Most of the time it was just rice and beans. So my mom was on food stamps. I was the oldest of six kids. So, okay. Another thing that he mentions is that, um, you know, he had the same cheap food, I'm assuming, uh, on a daily basis, day old bread, um, you know, rice and beans. Um, I, I, I remember seeing a video uh, a few years back uh, about another gentleman, I, I believe from England, who went to the Philippines and experienced what it was to basically be, be a poor person in the Philippines. And um, part of that experience was seeing um, people who eat uh, not just leftovers, but also food that had been thrown away in garbage, uh, in garbage cans. Um, if, if that's not, uh, uh, you know, a, a definition of being poor, um, then I really don't know what is. I came from a really poor family, especially for U.S. standards. Since then, I've made millions of dollars as a performer, but more important than that, I've made Additionally, millions of dollars as an investor and as someone that started my own businesses and had them be quite successful. And now I've had the opportunity to help many people, including many of my Filipino friends. The first time I noticed this financial cultural issue in the Philippines was when I was on a date. I was on a date with this beautiful girl who had an awesome job as a nurse and she was getting paid quite well for Filipino standards. She was smart. We got to talking about money during the date and she said she didn't have any money. And I was really shocked because I knew that she had a good paying job and she was a smart girl. So she told me why she didn't have any money. It was because she was paying for her sister and her sister's child. So most of the money that she made was going to her family. Most of them didn't have jobs. Then I started seeing this come up more and more in almost every Filipino family that I would meet someone, the successful one, who is making money would be paying for the majority of the other people in a family, or sometimes a couple of people that paid for the rest of the family. And all this was doing was dragging down generation after generation and keeping everybody poor. Let me address that particular statement that David just made. Uh, yes. That, that happens and it happens a lot, especially in the Philippines, um, where the person, um, you know, the son, the daughter, um, finished school, they got a good paying job, um, and they basically are the ones who support the family. Okay, let me back up a second. In the Philippines, uh, unlike the Western world, uh, specifically the United States, um, Filip Filipino families tend to live together. Uh, when I say that, that means generation upon generation upon generation will usually stay in the same house. And if it ever does happen, yeah, we usually leave, but only at the time uh, when we get married. And that's not always true. A lot of us usually stay in the same house, even when we get married, that that happens a lot. Uh, that's for you know either economic reasons or just basically taking over responsibility for the house. Um, so that's where we're coming from. Um, yes, the same people you know that live in the house. For example, if your your dad uh, or your mom uh, and your siblings, you know, we're living in the same house, um, and you go off and get a job, you would probably be especially if you're single, you'd probably be living at home um, and also contributing to, you know, the household monetarily and um, whatever else. So yes, um, it seems like you're supporting everyone else. Um, and, and I believe that's what David means. But from a Filipino perspective, that's not just uh, for convenience sake. That's our duty, you know, as Filipinos, you know, the, 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 the basic um, premise for that is that now that you're able to work, now that you're able to earn a living, it's your turn to support the household, not just your mom and dad, not just your siblings. You know, if you can, yes, go ahead. But 
Remember this. You grew up with your parents or whoever it is. Maybe it's your grandparents that supported you within that household. You grew up with them supporting you. So now it's your turn. That's the Filipino way. And I don't think, um, I think that's where kind of the disconnect happens um, because a lot of Western cultures, especially here in the United States, um, you know, talk about uh, parents uh, kicking out their their children when they turn 18. You know, it's, it's it's a running joke here in the United States. You're 18, get out of the house. Or you know, you're you 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 earn a living now. You're you know, go on your own. So it's it's time for you to leave. That's why we have, you know, what we call the empty nest syndrome here in the United States. I think it it happens elsewhere, but you know, for the most part, you know, in the Western world, turn 18, get a job or whatever it is out the door you know you're not supposed to be living with mom and dad anymore so big difference between here and the philippines i think you would agree go ahead david i come from a big family of six kids but one of the biggest blessings in my life is the fact that my parents never gave me anything and i think one of the biggest blessings that i've given to my siblings is the fact that i've never given them anything financially. One time I gave my brother $2,500 that he paid me back <laughs> to start his clothing business, which is now worth millions of dollars. And he paid me back. I would never give any of my family members any money. Now, why is that? Does that mean I'm just a cruel person? <laughs> you could think so, but I believe in giving people opportunities, not in giving them money or giving them things. If you give somebody something, they will not appreciate it. They will not. If you give me something, I won't appreciate it. I guarantee, unless you've worked for something, you will never appreciate it as much. This is a cliche, but it's true. The old saying that if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. But if you teach him to fish, he'll eat for his life. This also applies to family. If you give your family a fish, they're gonna eat for a day. But if you don't give your family a fish, they're gonna go fishing themselves and they're gonna learn how to fish. <laughs> or give your family a fishing rod and tell them where the lake is. So let's make that clear. Don't give money to your siblings. If you wanna help somebody, give them an opportunity. Um, that's kind of a hard pill to swallow. Um, if I give somebody money, and they don't appreciate it then that's the end of me giving that person money um i don't think it's, it's as much as appreciating something oh, yes uh, i mean people have given me stuff money and i certainly i certainly appreciated it um i don't know about you um but um and i think i speak for a lot of filipinos when i say you know if somebody gives me some sort of a help you know some sort of help some sort of financial assistance um I certainly appreciate it. So, um, you know, saying that people won't appreciate it, it, it's kind of, you know, maybe it's it's those people that you know, um, but, you know, certainly a lot of the people that I know, um, when I do and I'm able, you know, help to help them, uh, I, I think they appreciate it. I hope they do. Um, and, you know, the other thing that I want to say is that, you know, it, it's not just you know, for them to say thank you to me for my help. Um, I, first of all, I don't expect anything in return. You know, if you're giving help uh, the financially or otherwise, um, or at least myself, if, if I try to help somebody out and if I can help somebody out, I don't expect something in return. I'm not sure if, if you're looking for payment back or anything like that. Uh, usually when Filipinos help out, yeah, I mean, obviously it'll be nice to get paid back, um, the money, if, if it's a financial um, assistance that you just provided, yeah, you know, it'd be nice, but I, I'm not expecting anything back. I mean, I, I'm giving it, you know, through the goodness, hopefully the goodness of my heart. Um, the other thing about that is, yeah, I, I really don't want to drag this, you know, this portion of the conversation on, but um, for the most part, Filipinos, and I think this is true of a lot of Asian cultures, we're not really good at expressing ourselves. It's, I think it's starting to change a little bit. Um, we're not really good at expressing ourselves, uh, expressing gratitude, um, but we'll do it in action. Um, you know, we'll, you know, 
will do things like I'll cook for you, maybe I'll clean your house, I'll take care of your kids, um, you know, but we will show our appreciation. Um, you know, we're, we're not unappreciative. So, you know, uh, again, I, I really don't want to drag this out, but, you know, you saying that, you know, people you, you help uh, will not appreciate it, I, I don't think that's, that's true at all. But you might have experienced something different. So, um, you know, I mean, we'll leave it at that. Go ahead. Now, I know what you're going to say. Oh, well, I'm giving money to my parents or my grandparents. They're old already, so I need to give them money. Well, no, you don't. If you're in a position of financial security yourself already, and what I mean is you've already got all you need. You're making money just off interest. You're above and beyond your means. You're financially stable. You're not living paycheck to paycheck. Okay, then help your parents or help your grandparents. But if you're just living off of basically what you earn and have a little bit of savings, then by giving money to your grandparents or your parents, you're actually just hurting their future generations. You're not uplifting the family. You're not taking the family to another level financially, and you're just keeping everyone down. So you're actually hurting everybody by helping them. I know it seems like the right thing to do, to give money to your parents, but if your parents and your grandparents really have your best interest at heart, then they're going to want you to be successful and your kids to be successful. And you know what? They're already old. I mean, they've already made their decisions in, in their life. So at this point, you've got to make your decisions. Okay. Um... You say they already made their decision. Um, you, you're talking as if they're already dead, um, or they're on their way there pretty pretty soon. Um, you know, that one is kind of a, a hard pill to swallow. Um, just because they're old doesn't mean, um, and I, I know you didn't say this, but just because they're old, we're not going to discard people. We don't do that as a culture. Um, usually when, when, when our parents or our grandparents uh, get old, um, we're, we're usually the ones taking care of them. Um, it, it's very um, strange to, uh, you know, it's a strange way of thinking for us to ever, to ever uh, put our parents, for example, in a, in a senior citizen's home and not be with them. You've got to make the decisions that are going to affect your grandkids. On the other hand, if you don't just give this money away to people, and instead you're a good steward of the money that you earn, you invest it well, you start businesses, you start companies, you buy real estate, you have investments, you're going to be able to help so many people. And that's the thing that you've got to think of is by not helping somebody today, you're putting yourself in a position where you can help them in huge ways and even bigger ways tomorrow and years from now. This year, I didn't give any of my friends money. If they asked for money, I said no. I didn't give any of my family money. But you know what I did? I gave them huge opportunities. I said, this is what you need to do to go make a lot of money. Or here's an opportunity for you to make. Okay. Um, all right. Um, first of all, um, you know, I want to go back to my previous comment where, you know, it's a cultural thing. And I think you would agree with me that it is a cultural thing um, about us, you know, basically staying in the same home. Um, the previous generation helping us out, not just our parents, not just our grandparents, but, you know, maybe there's an uncle that lives with us who has a good paying job and is sending me to school. Um, you know, he doesn't have to do that, but he does. Uh, out of the goodness of his heart, um, but being Filipino means um, helping out, helping out as much as we can, and basically taking over responsibility from our parents, from our grandparents. Um, that's the Filipino way. I mean, you know, is it good? Is it bad? Um, you know, you point out, you certainly point out the bad of it. Um, but I think um, it works for us. 
whether it's good or bad, it works. Um, yeah, you know, we may, we may not get rich uh, beyond our means, um, you know, but that's not really the point. The point is to keep on going. Um, again, going back to a previous comment that I made, being poor in the Philippines is different than being poor elsewhere in the United States, in you know, European countries, Canada. Uh, you know, I hate to put it all in, in, you know, put it all in one basket, but, you know, I'm certainly experiencing it here in the United States. Being poor here, you know, people still are able to to spend money to you know to on luxury items. You know, I really don't want to get into that conversation. But um, again, you know, it's not for us. It, it doesn't hurt, uh, and it's actually our way of helping. You know, or of it's not really paying it forward, but paying it back. Um, for their suffering, for their sacrifices. And if you think about it that way, it'll make sense. You know, that's the only thing I'm going to say about that. A lot of money. And I've made my friends probably at least half a million dollars this year with opportunities that I gave them. My friend Carlo Raffinon, one of my best Filipino friends, he's making tens of thousands of dollars a year now performing, doing what he loves. Where just a couple of years ago when we met, he was working in a call center barely making enough money to get by and now he's just he's made enough money performing in gigs that I've gotten him to be able to start his own business back in the Philippines as well as do what he loves. My friend Monique Luohati was doing okay as a singer but now she's making hundreds of thousands of dollars performing around the world as a singer. My friend Sam Mangobat, <laughs> same thing. He was barely getting by and it gave him an opportunity to shoot, shoot music videos for me, which was some of the first music videos he ever produced. And I paid him for that and gave him that opportunity. And he gave me great music videos. And then he said, I want to travel around the world performing. And he needed money to be able to get visas to be able to do that. So did I give him money? Well, no, I gave him money, but he paid me back, but I gave him an opportunity. If you want to help your friends and family, give them opportunities. This is why Filipinos don't get rich, because they give each other money. And if you don't have an opportunity to be able to give somebody, well, then you're not in a position to be able to help them financially either. Good luck, guys. I hope this helps. Okay. Um, so those are your friends. That's, that's great. Um, um, and they've you know, been successful because of your help, the opportunities that you gave. Um, but you have to think. A lot of the Filipino families that you're talking about, David, don't know you. <laughs> so, and they don't really know, um, I don't want to say they don't know any, they, they, they don't know any better, um, but basically that's the case. Um, you know, they're used to that particular life. Um, and, you know, again, going, I, I keep doing this, I keep going back to my previous statement is that, you know, the money that gets spent, uh, for example, you know, I'll go back to that same example where, you know, maybe the husband went abroad to help out his family. Um, you know, that money is being spent on education, clothing, that sort of thing. So I think, yeah, again, you know, I, I'm going to go, I'm going to argue now that, you know, that is an opportunity. You're creating that, that man, that, that, that father is creating a, a better opportunity for his kids to you know, to maybe get a better education, to maybe go to college, to maybe get a better paying job. And guess what those kids are going to do? They're going to pay it back. You know, when his father finally retires from working abroad, what do you think is going to happen? He's going to go back to the same house where most likely his, you know, his parents still live in. Um, so now it's the kid's turn um, to basically support the family. And in you know, I believe in, in, in the generational thing where, you know, it, it does get better. You know, more, of more, more and more of the children get educated, they go to school, they get well-paying jobs. Um, and, you know, they go ahead and they, 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 then it's their turn to help the family. Uh, it's, it's just a very Filipino thing. Um, you know, it's great that you've helped out, you know, fellow, you know, my, my fellow Filipinos and, you know, you you've experienced the life in the Philippines and it, I'm sure they're grateful for that. Um, but yeah, you, you still, you know, they, thank goodness you got your money back when, you know, you, you lent it to somebody. But, um, 
um, you know, the lesson there is that, you know, never expect anything in return. If, if, if you're, you know, if you're going to give of yourself, of your resources, you know, never, never really expect anything in return. It'd be nice, again, it'd be nice to get paid back, um, you know, but there's other ways that, that, that you know, that, that you can receive compensation for what you've done. Um, you know, maybe you're not realizing it, but, you know, that's the way we Filipinos, um, you know, handle gratitude. So, again, it, it may be a subtle thing. From but, a uh, cultural we perspective, do, we do it from a, socio, from a socio-economic perspective, we can't afford, you know, as Filipinos uh, living in the Philippines, we can't afford um, to think too long term. Um, just because of what's been happening or what had happened before, um, you know, within our families. If, if for example, if we're poor, uh, I, you know, I count my blessings every day because we weren't very, very poor. I mean, we could, you know, I went to a, um, you know, a private school all my life. Um, so I, I really count my blessings. Again, I'm, you know, I, I'm very blessed. I was very blessed growing up, but you know, for people like those, you know, the poor that you talk about, um, you know, they can't really afford to think long term. Um, you know, for them, survival on a daily basis is number one. So, um, and if they're able to help out their parents, where are their parents going to go? Um, you know, so if somebody's able to help them out uh, to live on a daily basis, then you know that's what that's what they do. That's what happens. So that's what you know. That's where we're coming from. Um, so yeah, no, you know, wh whatever you're talking about um, uh, works may work for you, but you know, for Filipinos, um, it doesn't work. So um, I think this is uh, you know towards the end of your. Um, your statement regarding why Filipinos um, don't get rich. Um, for many of us, I don't think, uh, you know, getting rich is, you know, the point. Um, it would be nice. Um, for us, I believe it's, um, and I, I think for the most part, we strive to succeed. Um, and if we do get rich, hey, it's icing on the cake, right? So, um, you know, I wrote down a couple of things, um, you know, I, I didn't want to lose my train of thought that, um, you know, I, I was thinking about this um, and, you know, this statement of yours. Um, and, you know, this is what I wrote down, you know, yes, it, it's nice to be rich um, beyond imagination, uh, but ultimately, you know, what gives us Filipinos uh, ha real, real happiness, you know, are the people around us. Uh, for the most part, our family, um, our close friends, um, you know, and the help, uh, you know, if we're able to help out somebody, uh, especially family members, even friends, um, you know, and alleviate them of, of, of their suffering, even for a little bit, that gives us, um, you know, such happiness that, that we're happy to do it. Um, you know, it, it seems like a very foreign concept, um, you know, especially for people who don't live in the Philippines, who, who've never experienced life in the Philippines. Um, you know, because it is, it, it's, it's a very foreign concept. Um, you know, especially for me, who has lived here in the United States most of my life. Yes, it's, it's very foreign. Um, you know, um, but, but what Filipinos do is that we share what we have um, uh, every day. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the way we are, um, to a fault. And you know, you, you've certainly pointed that out. Um, you know, we either prosper together uh, or we suffer together. Um, you know, that's basically just the way it is. I, I think that's, you know, that's really the, you know, the main point is that we are happy uh, to help out any way we can. You know, but, but I, I did love the last part about you helping your friends. And, um, you know, but guess what? You know, you, you made them successful. Um, yes, they have a lot of money now, but guess what? Who do you think they're helping now? Yes, their family. You know, they're probably giving money to their brother who hasn't made it yet. You know, trying to you know get him to start a business. Um, maybe they're even supporting the their parents. You know, paying it back. Again, that's how Filipinos live. So, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, try to try to keep that in mind when when you're thinking about um, you know your statement about why Filipinos. Um, 
don't get rich. So you see, David, um, no matter how big or how little we help our family out, um, you know, you can rest assured uh, it's it's appreciated. So um, there's there's lots of videos. I'm sure you've you've seen it on YouTube um, of foreigners coming from different parts of the world uh, visiting the Philippines and. Uh, they experience the culture, they go to different parts of, of you know, the islands and you know, the one common denom denominator that, that comes out of, uh, of their experiences is that um, you know, the Filipinos uh, are you know, one of the friendliest if not the friendliest people uh, in the entire world. And the one thing that everybody says, uh, especially on those videos, is that all the Filipinos uh, that they've encountered, they're always smiling, they're always happy. And guess what, David? You know, and, and all of these people are most likely very poor. Um, so you know, that, that's why I kind of find it. Um, you know, I, I don't really find it amusing that you know a lot of people in the world, especially in the Philippines, are still suffering. Um, you know, a lot of them are just getting by, and you know, for a lot of them, that's you know, that's the way of life. But. Uh, you know, a lot of foreigners who come and visit the Philippines always say, "Hey, how come you know the Filipinos seem to always be happy? They seem to always be smiling." Um, the reason for that, and in my opinion, uh, and it's just my opinion, is that we are content as a people. Yes, we struggle. We struggle a lot, especially you know, especially with the you know socio-economic climate that we're in right now, um, with you know the political climate. That sort of thing always seems to be changing. Uh, yeah, th those are those are those are real struggles, and you know you can't you can't deny that. That's you know the pro the, the Philippines has you know big issues just like any other country, um, but what keeps us happy or, or makes us happy um, ultimately is if we're able to help out our fellow Filipinos, especially our family. Um, you know that's that's basically number one for us. You know, it, it's what makes us happy. And ultimately, it's what makes us Filipinos. You know, I hope this was an education uh, for you. Um, again, this is just my opinion, my kind of response to you know your statements. Uh, again, I'm not arguing with you. Um, you know, I just wanted for you to um, realize the other side of the coin. Um, there is, you know, uh, yeah, another side to your story so this is that side um, you know from my perspective as a filipino and as a filipino growing up in the united states um, so i hope you find this useful and you know i wish you luck god bless you, uh, you know, on your continued success and you know, may you may you help out uh, a lot more people with your success uh, and i'm sure you have um, and um, you know i'm happy for you and you know, I thank you for, for the statements that you made because those statements, a lot of them are very true, very on point. Maybe, you know, there will come a time where we'll, we'll start to think that way. Um, but for now, I think we're happy the way we are.
Um, I think this is, uh, you know, towards the end of your um, your statement regarding why Filipinos um, don't get rich. Um, for many of us, I don't think, uh, you know, getting rich is, you know, the point. Um, it would be nice. Um, for us, I believe it's, um, and I, I think for the most part, we strive to succeed. Um, and if we do get rich, hey, it's icing on the cake, right? So, um, you know, I wrote down a couple of things. Um, you know, I, I didn't want to lose my train of thought that, um, you know, I, I was thinking about this um, and, you know, this statement of yours. Um, and, you know, this is what I wrote down. You know, yes, it, it's nice to be rich um, beyond imagination. Uh, but ultimately, you know, what gives us Filipinos uh, ha real, real happiness, you know, are the people around us. Uh, for the most part, our family, um, our close friends, um, you know, and the help, uh, you know, if we're able to help out somebody, uh, especially family members, even friends, um, you know, and alleviate them of, of, of their suffering, even for a little bit, that gives us, um, you know, such happiness that, that we're happy to do it. Um, you know, it, it seems like a very foreign concept, um, you know, especially for people who don't live in the Philippines, who, who've never experienced life in the Philippines. Um, you know, because it is, it, it's, it's a very foreign concept, um, you know, especially for me who has lived here in the United States most of my life. Yes, it's, it's very foreign, um, you know, um, but, but what Filipinos do is that we share what we have um, uh, every day. <laughs> that's 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 the way we are um, to a fault and you know you you've certainly pointed that out um, you know we either prosper together uh, or we suffer together um, you know that's basically just the way it is I, I think that's you know that's really the you know the main point is that we are happy uh, to help out any way we can um, you know, but but I, I did love the last part about you helping your friends, and um, you know. But guess what? You know, you you made them successful. Um, yes, they have a lot of money now. But guess what? Who do you think they're helping now? Yes, their family. You know, they're probably giving money to their brother who hasn't made it yet. You know, trying to you know get him to start a business. Um, maybe they're even supporting the their parents. You know, paying it back. Again, that's how Filipinos live. So, um, you know. Uh, uh, you know, try to try to keep that in mind when when you're thinking about um, you know your statement about why Filipinos um, don't get rich. Um, so you see, David. Um, so you see, David. Um, no matter how big or how little we help our family out, um, you know, you can rest assured uh, it's it's appreciated. So. Um, there's there's lots of videos. I'm sure you've you've seen it on YouTube um, of foreigners coming from different parts of the world uh, visiting the Philippines. And there's one uh, common, um, um, I guess. Okay, cut. You've seen a lot of those videos on YouTube. Um, maybe maybe not uh, of uh, foreigners that come to the Philippines. Uh, they experience the culture, they go to different parts of, of you know, the islands and, you know, the one common denom denominator that, that comes out of, uh, of their experiences is that, um, you know, the Filipinos uh, are, you know, one of the friendliest, if not the friendliest people uh, in the entire world. And the one thing that everybody says, uh, especially on those videos, is that all the Filipinos uh, that they've encountered, they're always smiling, they're always happy. And guess what, David? You know, and, and all of these people are most likely very poor. Um, so you know, that, that's why I kind of find it. Um, you know, I, I don't really find it amusing that you know a lot of people in the world, especially in the Philippines, are still suffering. Um, you know, a lot of them are just getting by, and you know, for a lot of them, that's you know, that's the way of life. But. Um, You know, there, there was another video that I actually saw um, 
you know, asking, there was more of a, it was more of a question why, you know, when, when they encountered Filipinos, it's like, why do Filipinos smile a lot? And, um, Filipinos smile a lot, and this is just my opinion. Filipinos smile a lot because they're content. Um, yes, we're poor. Uh, we're a four, uh, yeah. Filipinos smile a lot because we're content. Yes, a lot of us are poor, um, you know, live day to day. Um, you know, but we've gotten used to, or, or they've gotten used to that, that, that type of uh, uh, life and, you know, living day to day. Cut. Yeah, again, going back to, to, to a lot of the videos that I watch um, uh, with foreigners going and visiting the Philippines and you know, the one common denominator is that they always say that Filipinos smile a lot. Uh, and why is that? Um, first of all, we're content. I think, um, yeah, it's nice to be rich. Uh, it's nice to be able to help more people than, you know, just our families. But that's not the way we live. That's, I mean... You know, um, ultimately, you know, to be a Filipino means you know to be able to help out, uh, especially our families, to able to be able to. Hang on. Cut, 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 cut. 